So, van is backed up onto some ramps there. We've um, and we've got the parts for the uh, spare wheel to be fitted, or the spare wheel carrier to be fitted, I should say, because I've yet to order the spare wheel. So let's just show you what that process involves as well to get the um, spare wheel carrier fitted on the Mobile Vetter here. You'll see also that um, we're here because what I'm also having fitted is a tow bar. So if you look out on the channel, channel for the other film from Mix here in Freckleton, then you'll also see the um, see that tow bar being fitted in the process, start to finish process that that involved too. So do check out that other film on the channel. But this one, this one's all about the uh, getting that um, spare wheel carrier fitted as well underneath this Fiat Ducato chassis. How lucky am I? DPD man's just arrived and these are the attachments you need to fit to the already drilled holes under the chassis to take a spare wheel. So the wonderful Mick is now, because the van's lifted up, has said that he will very kindly put on underneath there the carrier for the spare wheel. So that's now two projects done in one hit purely by luck. Delighted with that, and um, all I've got to do now is get me my spare wheel, and we can get rid of that horrendous foamy stuff, which, as I said earlier, never inspires me with the greatest of confidence. So, what a gent! Bracket fits up under the van, holes already there, so it's just a matter of getting that fitted, and now. Now get me back siding gear to get the uh, to get a, a fifth wheel. And the key thing with uh, with the spare wheels for these as well is that um, is yes, it's five uh, five nuts on there, but it's also about the spacing of the nuts because depending on which age of motorhome, which style you've got, then these measurements vary and sometimes only by a tiny bit, by about 10 mil difference. But it of course makes all the difference if you're 10 mil out when you come to fit a spare wheel. So, um, so the key things to know is your spacings here and the number, literally down to the last millimeter to make sure you get these measurements right. So I'll let you know what those are um, as and when I've had a look to compare what I've got here. And so if we measure the if we measure the centers, which is about 76, let's say, 76 to 77 mil between the two nuts, um, then if you are uh, a five stud wheel, which this one is, then you can take that measurement, 76, 77 mil and then divide it by 0.5878 is the equation which you want for five stud wheels. So 5878, so we said 76 divided by 0.5878. Yeah, that gives us a 129. Yeah, 129. So if you did the same by 77 mil, say, divided by 0.5878. Um, yeah, 130. So we're looking for probably a 130, a 5 by 130 spare. So that's the centres from the two of your nuts, if you've got a 5 stud wheel, um, divided by 0.5878. And that should give you the, um, the uh, spare wheel size that you're looking for. And so that... Um, that 130, which is uh, taking it at 77 mil. That uh, gives you what they call the PCD, which is the pitch center diameter. And it's a way of working out the pitch center diameter, which is a key measurement for your spare. And the pitch center diameter is actually the distance between these two, or it's a measurement that involves these two sort of opposite nuts. But cut a long story short, without boring you, the way to get to the PCD is, as I say, is to take that measurement to the centres for a five stud, divide it by 0.5878, and that gives us our 
130 PCD, which is what you're looking for. And incidentally, in terms of what I was saying about getting that measurement pretty much right, is that, of course, Fiat for this age of van, this is a 2021, there are, in fact, a couple of different sizes of wheels. There's a 5x118 as standard and a 5x130 as standard. So if, for example, we said, or you got your measurement slightly out, um, and let's say 70 mils, so we've tried 76, haven't we, and 77, but let's just drop in uh, 70 mil divided by 0.5878. And you can see there that if you've got yourself a few mil out, i.e. I've put in 70 mil there and I've come out with um, 119, and therefore that's pointing you at the 118 uh, standard Fiat 5x118 um, and not the actual one you should want which of course is the 5x130 so anyway point being um, for only a 5 mil difference um, I've managed to end up potentially getting the wrong sized um, replacement wheel so measure once measure twice and measure even a third time to make sure you're right so in terms of the how it works on the van is that's obviously the piece that's fitted up under the chassis together with this piece here then here you've got um, a space for the spanner that allows you to lower the wheel down it doesn't stay on the van permanently and then uh, once inserted start to wind that then allows the cable to come round this section here um, the spare cable the spare cable as you drop the wheel down this comes out of here um, and therefore as you wind down your ratchet it releases this which is fitted to your wheel this piece which allows the wheel to lower down from the underside of the van a lot easier to probably understand when you see it on the van itself these pieces um, incidentally can be bought from a place in Stoke I think it is which I'll put the details of on the screen so there we go there's our assembly and you can see you can see there the um, pre-drilled holes there fitted up into the uh, underside of the chassis there and then the second, uh, second part then just bolts through the back here get a quick picture of it Parkinson isn't it yeah So that was Mick just um, extending the small spanner that's needed to wind up the uh, spare wheel mechanism and I'll show you why he's extended it with a quick bit of MIG welding as you do when you've got the talents of Mick. It's to allow it to go through one of the new chassis members that we've added so that, uh, so that you can ratchet it down. Yeah. Bit more welding. What we've done is we've drilled through the chassis there and you can see as Mick ratchets it there that's what's then lifting up what will be the spare wheel hanging on the end of it but you can see the hole there that that Mick has drilled through the new chassis piece to allow a slightly extended bar to go now through the hole into the socket there that you saw when it was on the workshop bench which then allows you to wind the wheel up and down makes it look so simple took him about 60 seconds to extend by about um, 100 mil the length of the uh, ratchet bar that we used to raise and lower the wheel 
when you've got the kit and the MIG welder and 30 years of knowledge done in a jiffy. Fan bloody tastic. And there we go, there's the ratchet bar with the piece, extra piece from about there to there. Just been MIG welded in, sprayed over, ground down, ready to go. Fantastic. And there, if you just look down there, you can see the, uh, see that hole coming through, which is where our newly lengthened ratchet tool has to come through there where you attach then your ratchet spanner and that's what then lowers it lowers the wheel up and down so a bit fiddly but then again once you've got a puncher and you've got the <laughs> yes it definitely is in a silly place yeah so but once you've got your flat you're gonna have to get get down and mucky under the van so as long as i know where it is i'll be able to get to that Okay, let's just loosen it off and then we can that that should be it, yeah. There we go, yeah, that's relocated. You should hear it like lock into place. Yeah, yeah. The real one. And as straightforward as that. Or at least made to look straightforward. <laughs> the wheel then obviously will that'll drop into the centre point of the wheel. Um, but more especially, you can see that even with the wheel fitted here, there's your uh, handbrake cables coming through. It's well clear of those handbrake cables, so it shouldn't interfere with those at all. But I'll hopefully get a little bit of footage for you when uh, when we've got the wheel. So back on the drive now. I nudged it backwards a bit because of the slope of the pavement was going to help me ferret underneath the van where we've got to fit the spare. So on the um, on this Fiat Ducato chassis at the moment, we've obviously got the Michelin Agilis tyres and their um, 225-75R16CPs. So what we basically needed to source was a spare, which I wasn't over fussed as to whether it was uh, alloys or not, grabby wheels. Van's looking a bit cleaner though than when it was at Mick Parkinson's, blimey. That was grubby. Um, not bothered about getting the five spoke alloys, but um, uh, so what I've sourced from Hang Ren Wheels and Tires is uh, just a standard Fiat Ducato wheel. Um, it's obviously got a Michelin Agilis on it, which is the same size, 22575, so that's the key thing. But um, what I've also done, because it's just a straightforward alloy wheel, then uh, steel wheel, I should say, then I've also had them fit. They give you an option at Halmer End Wheels and Tires to have a um, part worn tire on it. And at the end of the day, this is only a, a fix until you can get your um, van tire repaired. So it meant that you save about uh, 70 or quid. Um, so to buy this wheel and tyre together was 80 quid um, which is pretty good and if I wanted a brand new Michelin Agilis on it then it was something like 150 to 160 I think was the price um, but you can check out their website I'll leave a link to it in the description below um, but this is a part worn one so it's not down on the tread wear indicators yet you can just see them there they're still there's still a, let's just move so we get a bit more light. You can see the indicators there, so there's still probably a couple of thousand miles at least in these. So they're more than adequate to um, to deal with the puncher. Um, and obviously it's a sound tire in all other respects. There's no other, no other fraying or wear on it after a good look. So this is the one therefore that we're gonna sling up under the van. And, um, and another reason why I didn't bother getting a, uh, getting a one to match the spoked ones there was obviously this is going to hopefully be rarely used and sit up under the van but it's also of course going to gather dirt and crap um considered covering it might consider that but um it meant that i can probably still get to the valve relatively easy to check the pressures if i don't if i don't leave it covered um, but we'll see how that goes and see how it how it gets on over the first few months of uh, of driving whilst it's slung under the van 
Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's get this now fitted up under the van and show you that process. And indeed, while I'm uh, while I'm on the subject of uh, spare wheels, let's just visit the uh, rarely visited place that we have in these uh, in these vans or this Fika Fiat Ducato based van under the passenger seat. You can just lift that little plastic flap, flap or it sort of stretches it doesn't actually lift as such and then opened up under the seat there you've got your spare wheel kit um, so let's just show you that out of interest because obviously the adapted bits that I've got from Mick in respect of uh, unwinding the underslung wheel have been adapted so they're obviously not part of the kit but uh, but of course being all things motorhome, they make it quite difficult to get that out. Down there, there's like a quarter turn, quarter turn catch, which now has freed it up and it moves, but of course you can't pull it out because of the carpeting and this is in the way, but if you see down there, these brackets, you can just give it a sort of sharp little, little pull like that and you can release each side, the, the bracket there, just give it a sharp tug and it pulls out those, uh, those little round hinges out of their receivers there. Um, let's pop that out of the way. And that then allows you to drag the box all the way forward. And of course, they never make it easier to even get it out. So you've got to take it right forward into the footwell. And uh, it's even more fun, of course, doing it one-handed. So there you see, forward into the footwell, that allows you to lift it up. And now I do need two hands just to lift it into the back of the van. So you'll see there, it's just got a little clip there. You just press that in and that allows the lid to lift. It's not, it's not sort of properly hinged at the back, so it can just lift out like that. But we'll just lay that back there. And there you go. That's what, uh, that's what they obviously supply um, as part of your jack. Um, your winder for the other end of the jack. This is obviously the lever that uh, you use that slots in to that, to the end of that. Um, and that provides the leverage that you need um, to wind your jack up. Um, and the other piece, which was the piece that you saw Mick modify, that's the piece down here. There you go, so that's its standard length, but you can see the one that Mick made in the workshop there was that with a piece added on the end. Um, and that's the bit that we're obviously, or the extended piece I should say, that we're going to use to raise and lower the uh, spare wheel attachment. A little screwdriver handle, Phillips or a Phillips um, screwdriver head there. And then obviously that's your um, tow bar that screws into the uh, front bumper there, or your tow hook I should say, that screws in to the front bumper. So you can see, there's the hole. Uh, now we're looking from this side. You can see it's really awkward. Um, to get into this but as I say hopefully it's a once in a lifetime ish occurrence um, there's the piece that Mick made and um, it'll take it'll take either a 21 mil ratchet which would um, just slot on the back there like that um, or of course uh, I've also got a 21 mil socket fitted on the uh, on the end of the uh, Makita, so we'll uh, if we stick that in through the hole, see it goes up through the hole into the uh, into the receiver there, and then if we slot the drill just on the back end here, we can just very carefully you can just see the holder responding there up and down as I uh, unwind there. So we'll drop it down. Try and get that wheel fitted on and uh, and then lift it back up again. But you can see this bit here, it's a bit fiddly. You can see why uh, Mick extended that bar to take it through the bit under there, uh, bring it out through here. Obviously perhaps uh, another bit of bar that takes it out beyond the, uh, uh, let's turn that around slightly, another piece of uh, ratchet bar perhaps that took it beyond the wheel would make life even easier but it's not too bad uh, if you're lucky enough to have um, something that will do it electronically for you i.e. one of these then uh, it makes it a bit easier otherwise um, 21 21 mil ratchet there and uh, there you have it so you can wind it up and down with that instead um, okay let's get the wheel on 
So then once we've got this down, then it's just a matter of unscrewing this bit. Um, and then feeding the, um, feeding the whole unit into the wheel recess down there and then re-securing that, uh, that little nut we've just taken off. But of course, as you can imagine, being fertled under the van here, it's not the easy, easiest jiggling around in the world. Probably easiest to get the wheel a little bit closer or directly under this, prop up one side a bit, then that just allows me to do the maneuvering so that I can get this um, in, through the, uh, in through the hole in the middle there. So that's the uh, that's that popped in. You can just see the screw thread is coming through. Uh, you can see the smaller and larger holes is actually coming its, its position through one of the larger of the holes. In other words, where the wheel studs themselves would go, um, rather than trying to wheedle it into this smaller one. There we go. Let's just get that nut back on there. Nice and tight, and you can see it's got a, uh, a bolt head style. So I'll just drop an adjustable spanner on that, give it a few turns, get it nice and tight. All right, and that's just giving it a couple of winds up, just to just to get it nice and tight, and then we'll be time to lift it up. I have to say, though, of course, you wouldn't, uh, you probably wouldn't want to be under here too many times during the ownership of this lovely van to be have to be under here doing this job. It would be a bit mucky, that's for sure. But when needs must, it's better than that foam, that's for sure. And you can see that uh, this round section here has got to fit up into this uh, round profile here so that it comes in and almost hangs on this part of it here obviously the cable here will drag it up as we wind it up on the ratchet right so now the moment of truth let's just wind it up a little bit more on the drill very gently on the trigger and then with my trusty 21 mil spanner. And then what we'll do is we'll just ratchet it up the last few bits. And you can see with this, as you, as you take it up on the ratchet, you can see that the spring loaded piece at the bottom there, right underneath the spare wheel, it, uh, you can see the spring contracting there as you get it in its final. You see where it just sort of joggled there. That's it locating itself into those grooves. And to get it to do that, you have to keep ratcheting it so that that spring starts to compress. That's right in the uh, right in the centre under the wheel there um, until it starts to compress, and then that just uh, allows it to go into those two grooves we saw just before I lifted it up there. Um, and then. Now, that ratchet won't move at all now, so that's gone into those two notches and it's, uh, it's uh, safe as houses in that. He says with his fingers crossed, hoping that it's all, it's all been put on properly. <laughs> we, we, at least you could say that it's at the back of the van, so if it does come off, it'll, dis it'll disappear out the back quite quickly and not damage anything up front. But. Uh, that of course doesn't uh, doesn't allow for who might be behind me, but no, joking aside, joking aside, it um, it seems a, a very secure fitting, and um, obviously uh, it um, it's part and parcel of the of the chassis of the Fiat anyway, because it's all pre-drill ready for this carrier it, for some uh, unknown reason, probably related to cost. I'm sure they uh, decide to give you the foam instead of uh, a proper wheel, but. As I say, I might uh, keep the foam. I mean, if it's a tiny little hole in a tire or a nail or something, then the foam might actually uh, might actually get us to the tire garage instead of going through what we've uh, what you've just seen uh, ferreting under the van. If it's chucking with rain or something, so the foam might become a preference. But um, but at least we got both options now. If we're uh, down in deepest Europe.
So with the uh, light from my phone, you can see there that spring that I talked about that compresses itself. And if you look, if I get some light in there, you can just see through the hole there that the um, that the carrier has located into those uh, into that sort of U-shaped groove that we looked at before I lifted it up. So you can actually visually check that everything has uh, gone home and seated itself correctly. And then um, what you should be left with is um, is a wheel that just hardly moves at all. The ratchet that we uh, wound it up on over here. That was uh, at its absolute max. I couldn't turn it anymore. So obviously the slight movement in the spare wheel here is because of the spring under here, which uh, which you can just see is allowing that bit of movement. So, um, but in terms of security and, and uh, stability under the van here, then that is well and truly fixed. Retained by the wiring system that's ratcheted up, retained by the uh, screw that's on the other side there that we saw that I fitted. Uh, where's it gone? Uh, sorry, there, yeah. Retained by that and retained by the sort of U-shaped groove that the whole thing notches into once you've wound it right the way up. So pretty secure fitting. Um, in fact, very secure fitting. Um, open to the elements, so we'll see how it, uh, see how it gets on. Um, but I guess if you put any sort of cover on it, it would uh, it would probably get equally as battered and probably shredded by the uh, by the uh, everyday use uh, as much as the wheel itself would. So not sure that putting a cover on it would do much. Um, but as I say, it still allows me to get to the uh, valve under there easily if I leave it uncovered to um, to check um, that it's still up around the uh, good old 5.5 bar or. 79 i think that equates to 79.5 psi that uh, that these michelins run at so that was all we used really um it was the extended bar that mick uh, mick welded you saw in that um that clip of film i used uh, just a simple adjustable to uh, to do up the nut that holds on the um holes on the spare wheel retainer that we uh, had to thread through there and then that 21 mil ratchet or 21 mil socket on the end of the drill but um, obviously if you're using a drill then the uh, then because once it's got the weight of the tire on it um, there's quite a uh, there's quite a weight for this to lift so um, if you've got your hand on that then obviously uh, <laughs> brace your hand against the drill so that the drill doesn't pivot and and uh, do your wrists um, so it might even be easier or more advisable should I say to do it on the 21 mil ratchet because then you can uh, do it at your own pace rather than if you pull the trigger too hard then uh, this thing will set off and uh, spin in your hand and can do yourself uh, do yourself some damage to your wrist um, but that's about it so time to get those tools away again and um, of course these new ones will now live in the van to make sure that in the hopefully incredibly unlikely event uh, hopefully that we uh, get us lots of fingers crossed that we get a uh, flat we've got the tools and the ability to uh, to get a decent wheel on it certainly if it's a puncher like we had on that film that's on the channel of us getting that massive piece of wheel bearing lodged in then it's a wheel that we needed on that occasion because the foam just wouldn't have done it well, that's the spare wheel stowed. And of course you missed out on all that, didn't you? I was up in Preston, I neglected Nikki, left her all alone here. Although when you came back, you fitted the spare wheel underneath and I came out to the driveway and found Bob lying on the ground. Yeah, feet and, sticking uh, out the side of the van. I disappeared underneath, hadn't I? Yeah, yeah, on this cold, cold ground. And I had my nice warm cup of tea and I felt a bit guilty. I did get a cup of tea eventually, but you know, I had to be out there for several hours before I, mm. before it finally appeared. Gosh, like a bloody desert it was, yeah, like I, a desert. I had a biscuit as well. Yeah, yeah, mm. all right for some. Right, anyway, enough of this chit chat. That was the <laughs> spare wheel. Uh, that was the spare wheel going on the underside. Links are in the description below. Um, fabulous to have you along as always, and we'll see you again on the next film, which of course will be the final bits of the trailer and. Peggy, the new moto. Oh, yes. Yes. Exciting. So, see you very soon. Yes, yeah, see you soon, see guys. You guys. Bye. Bye.